Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It is Caramel Coils here again with another video. So today is gonna be all about why your hair isn't flourishing. So I get so many DMs and comments whenever I post my before and after pictures, you know, when I was transitioning and before my hair was wash and go trained versus today, you know, my hair is healthy. I'm 100% natural. I don't have any heat damage and my curls are pretty, you know, my, my curls are pretty popping. I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, if you feel like your hair hasn't reached its full potential, you know, your wash and goes just aren't popping, your hair's just not popping, your hair's not growing, and you just can't figure out what it is, or if you're just new to the natural hair community in general, then this video is for you. So everything I'm gonna be touching on is equally important. There's no, I'm not going in any order specifically. Everything's equally important. So get your pen and pad ready. And yeah, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm gonna touch on is deep conditioning. If you are not deep conditioning every week, then sis, I really don't know what to tell you. Like you are, I'm not gonna say you're a lost cause cause you know, it's never too late, but y'all need to make sure that you are deep conditioning every week, the same way that you wake up every morning, brush your teeth, or at least I hope y'all do, the same way you brush your teeth before you go to bed, the same way you lotion every time you get out the shower, y'all need to make sure you're deep conditioning every week. Okay, if you have time to, hang out with your friends, if you have time to, you know, all these other recreational activities and all this other fun stuff, you guys have time to deep condition your hair. I have a video on my channel already that shows you how you can deep condition on the go, so I don't wanna hear that you can't, oh, I don't have time to sit it, twist that hair up, tie it with the head scarf, and lay your edges and call it a day. There's no excuse, and I'm telling I'm telling y'all from my experience, I was out here making excuses like, oh, uh, I'll do it next week, or it doesn't really make a difference, but and you may not see the difference the first time you deep condition, maybe not the second time, but I promise you, the more you deep condition your hair, the more your hair will become moisture trained. It doesn't matter how many products you're using or what products you're using. It doesn't matter how bomb your stylers are. It doesn't matter how bomb your gel or your cream or leave-ins are. If the foundation of your hair is not hydrated or moisturized, then your hair is not gonna reach its full potential. I'm speaking from experience. So there are some products that I used to use before I was deep conditioning weekly. I hated it, but now my pro my hair loves. For example, the Talia Waji Curly Curl Cream. I hated that back in the day. It just completely made my curls straight. It did, wasn't doing anything for my hair, right? And now I love, that's one of my favorite cream stylers. Yeah, so back then I wasn't deep conditioning among many other things. So my, less, my elasticity wasn't there, my bounce back wasn't there, my curls were just not healthy overall. So as a result of that, I wasn't a fan of this curly curl cream because it was like weighing my hair down. And now I love products that, there's no such thing as a product that weighs my hair down. So learn from my mistakes. Also, if you are low porosity like me, you guys need to start incorporating heat into your deep conditioning routine. So if you are deep conditioning every week, good job sis like keep it up if you were low porosity like myself and you're not incorporating heat then maybe you should i found that even if i leave a deep conditioner in overnight it doesn't have the same impact as it would if i were to sit under the dryer for 30 minutes our pores are a little more stubborn they're a little hard-headed they have a mind of their own applying heat to your hair makes your opens up your pores and makes them a little more receptive to moisture whether it's a thermal cap whether it's a hooded dryer i would recommend that you guys invest in some form of indirect heat to your hair so that like i said your deep conditioners can start putting in extra work now the next thing I'm gonna to touch on are low manipulation hairstyles. So if you're constantly slicking your hair into a bun or slicking it to a low puff or constantly slicking your hair down with gel and a brush, this is gonna to lead to breakage, it's gonna to lead to thinning of your hair, it's going to lead to a loose curl pattern and not in a good way. You're not about to be jumping from 4B to 3A hair, that's not that's not what I'm saying. It's just damaged basically. Especially for people who are new to the natural hair community or are transitioning, I know that it's so much easier to just slick your hair up into a bun, slick your hair up into a ponytail because that's the easiest thing and it probably looks the best but I'm here to tell you that you're gonna have to embrace that mediocre wash and go. You're gonna have to embrace that mediocre twist out and let your hair do its thing. So many girls message me like, oh, I don't know what's wrong with my hair. Um, help me, like, well, what's wrong? Why isn't my hair flourishing? Why isn't my, why are my wash and goes popping? Why this, this, and that? And then I go to their page and every other picture is them with a slick bun or a slick ponytail or slick puff or whatever the case may be. How can you expect to wash and go train your hair when it's constantly in a bun? You know what I'm saying? In essence, you're basically just training your hair to be in a ponytail in a bun and slick down. And again, this is coming from my experience. I've been there, done that. When I started going naturally, it was my freshman year of college. So it definitely wasn't easy. Initially, I was just licking my hair into buns. That's all I would do. Once I stopped caring and once I decided to just embrace my Mediocre wash and goes, that's when eventually my hair started to flourish, among many other reasons, but that definitely played a part. Think about the bigger picture, learn from my mistakes. Also, avoid laying your edges every day. If you don't have to, then don't do it. You know, if you have a special occasion, you wanna lay your edges, okay, cool. Me personally, every time I had a wash and go, I part my hair right here and I would lay my edges, but not just my edges, I was laying my actual, my hair as well. I would bobby pin this part of my hair back, then lay my edges, but also lay, slick down that one part, piece of my hair 
and I was doing that for every wash and go almost every day of that wash and go I was slicking it down because I, I just became obsessed with this whole slick edges look and now that piece won't curl up i constantly wanted to slick down that piece of my hair so eventually my hair was like all right bet i got you i'm gonna stay slick it is super thin curl pattern damn near non-existent it's just tragic so now i have i have no choice but to tuck that piece of my hair but the difference between then and now is when i tuck my hair i'm not slicking it down i'm just literally just tucking it with the bobby pin just so that you don't have to see it but yeah so i'm trying my best to get my curl pattern back still not where it needs to be but whatever we're working towards it so yeah like i said in conclusion y'all if you want to wash and go train your hair you need to wear your wash and goes you can't just slick it up into a bun you can't just slick it up into a ponytail don't get me wrong i'm not saying you can't slick your hair down you know what i'm saying every now and then or for special occasions but just do it in moderation don't get so comfortable doing the easiest hairstyle and the best looking hairstyle like i said i am a walking testimony i've been there done that so that's that now i'm gonna get into trimming your hair i try to make sure that i go to the salon get my ends trimmed every three months at the very max so i recommend you guys do the same start off by going every three months and then just adjust accordingly so maybe you go every three months then you start to realize that you don't need to go as often you can go every four months every five months or or maybe you have to go every two months you know what i mean you don't have to blow dry your hair to trim your ends i personally do just because my hair is cut in layers but i know that if i were to cut my hair while it's curly and get a specific shape when it's time for me to straighten my hair everything's gonna be all over the place and i can't afford that i love my silk presses too much i love my straight hair way too much i don't want to walk around with half of my hair up here and the other half over here um if you don't really wear straight hair you're not a fan of straight hair then i guess you can go for it go ahead and cut your hair while it's curly and it's in its natural state but like I said, I love my silk press. I'm gonna go ahead and keep um, uh, trimming my ends when my hair is straight. Even if you don't trim your ends while your hair is curly and instead you only do it when your hair is blow dried but you're only doing it every six months when you need to be doing it every three months, you're still gonna struggle with having uneven hair because you know, our hair doesn't, when our hair splits and breaks and we have single strand knots, it's not obviously not in unison. It kind of does its own thing. So hence why a lot of girls with curly hair when they finally blow dry and straighten their hair, they have pieces of hair here, pieces of hair there and eventually they have to cut it and make it even. The kinkier your hair is, the more likely you are prone to single strand knots to split ends all that and because i'm not even gonna lie because i wash and go primarily my hair is also more prone to single strand knots versus twist outs so somebody who does twist outs all the time their hair is stretched and they don't really have to worry about their hair tangling at least when i do twist outs when it's time for wash day wash day is a breeze i don't really have to detangle much because my hair has been stretched and already separated and has like a more i guess you could say a looser curl pattern in essence the curl pattern you have when you have a twist out is a lot looser than your curl pattern in its natural state because of that i definitely think that probably makes me a little more prone to single strand knots and having to trim my hair more often but i love my wash and go so i'm willing to make that sacrifice i'm willing to make that compromise so those split ends that y'all have eventually they will travel up that strand until it just breaks off whether you decide to trim your ends or not your hair those split ends are going to break and lead to you having shorter hair anyways so i would recommend trimming it yourself i get it everybody wants inches everybody wants waist length hair but nobody wants to trim their ends you can't have inches if you're not trimming your hair often and that's a fact every time i go for my trims i'm always a little heartbroken because i feel like all the progress i made i have to cut off and then i'm basically bald but i get over it once i finally style my hair and do my wash and go and i see how healthy and popping my hair is at the end of the day health over length y'all as much as i would love to have waist length hair i would love to you know have inches i know that my health is more important than length so, so the next thing i'm going to touch on is probably pretty self-explanatory and common sense y'all would probably think but i'm sharing this with y'all because i know this is something that i was really hard-headed about so take your time with your hair so one thing that i was doing for a really long time and this is when, my, when I was 100% natural, I wasn't transitioning anymore, but I hadn't accepted the fact that my hair took so long to style. See, like now, I dedicate specific days to my wash days based off of my plans and et cetera, et cetera, so I can take my time and I'm not rushing. The worst thing you can do is rush wash day. Like, you're better off postponing it for another day than rushing through wash day. And wash day is supposed to be the time, one-on-one -on -one time with you and your hair. This is where you learn your hair, where you nurture your hair. Like, okay, do I need a trim? Or do I need a protein treatment? Do I need to do a clay mask? You know what I mean? And you can't do all that when you're out here rushing. Like I said, when you're rushing to do your hair, you're most likely detangling your hair. You're losing a lot more hair when you're detangling. So instead of slowly working your way up from your tips to your roots, you're like tips halfway through and then roots you know what i'm saying and that leads to like i said lots of breakage and unnecessary shedding before i learned and accepted the fact that my hair took two hours or three hours to do i was out here rushing my wash days and it was just so miserable and it like honestly like it makes you almost not hate your hair but like 
there was a point in time, even though I knew at the back of my mind, it took me two to three hours to style my hair, right? I was kind of sort of in denial. So like whenever my friends say, okay, we're gonna leave the house at such and such a time, or they're gonna pick me up at such and such a time, I'm out here getting ready 30 minutes before, even though deep down inside, I know it takes me two hours or an hour to do my hair. You know what I'm saying? But now I'm rushing to stop. I'm, I'm, I'm rushing in the shower to detangle my hair and I'm losing hair, I'm breaking hair. I saw half of my head and then my friend says it downstairs. Then I gotta rush to stop the other half and then you know what I'm saying? It's not gonna look as good because you're not as thorough and then you're gonna be mad for the rest of the week because your hair, your pop washing goes not popping or your twist off's not popping or whatever the case may be, it's not popping because you didn't put as much effort as you did one side into the other side. You need to treat your hair like you would any other self-care day. So if you do facials or your nails, whatever it is that you don't rush to do, I'm gonna need you to keep that same energy for your hair. Don't rush wash day. So the last segment I'm gonna get into is moisturizing your hair. I'm going to have a completely different video that dedicated to how to properly moisturize your hair and like a very beginner friendly wash and go video. Um, so that's that's a completely different video. But in general though, you guys need to make sure that you're keeping your hair moisturized. So none of this waiting, you know, nine, 10 days after you wash your hair to wash your hair again, you know, and I'm guilty. Again, all of these things I'm telling you guys, I've been there, done that. There's sometimes I would wait past eight days to do my hair just because I'm like, oh, it doesn't look awful. You can just lick it up into a high puff, you know, as long as your edges are laid, you're good, you call it a day. But constantly doing that, you know, when it was time to wash my hair, finally my hair was like super dry, super tangled and a matted mess versus nowadays I try to wash my hair twice every seven days, especially if your hair isn't moisture trained. So my hair is moisture trained. I try to wash my hair maybe every four to five days typically because um, that's when my hair starts to get dry. And I noticed that the more often I wash my hair, the easier it is for my hair to retain moisture, the easier it is for me to detangle my hair. Wash day isn't as much of a chore as it used to be when I was waiting every, you know, eight days or nine days or so. Yes, I get it, two wash days in a week, that sounds like a lot, but your wash day won't be as challenging and it won't be so tedious because your hair won't be, your hair won't need as much maintenance and as much work. And when I say you're washing your hair twice a week, it doesn't have to be with a shampoo. You can always, if your hair is not moisture trained and you're not comfortable using shampoos, that often then you can co-wash your hair. If you guys saw my natural hair journey video, you guys would know that I was out here shampooing my hair every three days. Don't be like me. See, I wasn't using YouTube. Um, I wasn't fully utilizing the resources provided to me. And I was really out here shampooing every three days just because I thought that you had to shampoo your hair in order to wash it you couldn't just co-wash or condition your hair you know what i mean just learn from my mistakes so if you like i said if you have to go ahead and invest into a good co-wash or a good great conditioner because i primarily do wash and goes my hair is a lot more prone to these tangles and knots and whatnot so i need to make sure that i'm taking the appropriate precautionary measures to avoid those single strand knots even though you can never fully avoid them they're gonna happen regardless that's just something that comes with curly hair kinky hair but like i said i'm not gonna wait past seven days also make sure you guys are sectioning your hair make sure you guys are layering your hair in product make sure you guys are coating each strand from roots to tips to the middle don't be out here focusing on your tips and then you're neglecting your roots and vice versa each part of your hair is equally important so act accordingly so i think that's pretty much it y'all so like i said make sure you're going for your trims often learn your hair stop rushing your wash days take your time with your hair make sure you're deep conditioning every week at the very least also avoid the slick hairstyles yes i know it's the easiest thing and you'll probably feel the most confident with your slick ponytail bun whatever the case may be but if you really want to see the results if you really want to see your hair flourish if you really want your washing goes to be popping you got to put the brush down you got to put the gel down like i said i have a video already on how i achieve a couple of low manipulation hairstyles i also have a video on how i deep condition on the go if you feel like you don't have the time to deep condition i have a video already on my salon experience when i go for my blow dry and trim and stay tuned for my beginner friendly how to properly moisturize your hair video yeah so that's pretty much it y'all i really hope you found this video helpful if you did go ahead and give it a thumbs up thank you guys so much for tuning in i will see you next week